Wednesday, October the 27th. Beef War, first spy captured. Lucan declared dead. Quincy smells a rat. Lords abolished. Countdown rating soar. Please welcome the man who is female Viagra, Mr. Ian Lee. Welcome to the 11 o'clock show. So the government has finally decided to get rid of the House of Lords, and this time they're not messing about. They've started by declaring that Lord Lucan is now officially dead. If that works, who knows, they might bump up a few more later in the week. Soon the only person sitting on the Lords will be Tara Palmer Tomkinson. <laughs> Over the bins. <laughs> the Earl of Burford, Charles Francis Topham de Vere de Clark, staged a one-man, seven-name protest arguing that the Lords are not an obsolete, outdated anachronism. Well, no wonder he's so stupid. In his school, it must have taken all morning to call the register. And how does so... It's a joke. And <laughs> it's up to you if you laugh or not. And how does someone called Charles Francis Topham de Verbe Clark try to prove the Lords are not an outdated anachronism? He jumps on the wall sack and shouts, No Queen, no sovereignty, no freedom! Stand up for Queen and country, vote this treason down! He may as well have said, forsooth my league, which thou voted this way, and then scarped on a horse. <laughs> You're 34 years old, you inbred, chinless twat. Get a life. <laughs> Get a life and speak English. It's called progress. And progress is the same reason we don't have scurvy or jousting or MC Hammer anymore. <laughs> Getting the Lords out of the House of Parliament will save the taxpayer lots of money. They can scrap the Zimmer frames, they won't have to have the central heating on full all year round, and most importantly, this country will no longer have to suffer the indignity of a second chamber that smells of piss. <laughs> and now, please welcome a right honourable lady, the peerless Daisy Donovan! <laughs> Daisy, who would you like to see elected to the new House of Lords? Uh, what about Michael Flatley? Because people already think he's a lord, don't they? Mm. A gay lord. <laughs> um, I, th I think you mean Lord of the Dance there. No, Daisy, why don't you t calm down and tell us what's coming up in tonight's show? Tonight, we'll be finding out whether Ian managed to stay awake at the Liberal Democrat Party conference. You are really, really boring. You're the most boring, rubbish party in the whole country. You're so rubbish and shit, you couldn't even run a country. You haven't got a clue what you're doing. You're rubbish. How would you react to people like that? <laughs> and we'll be meeting Linda Blair, the woman who, at the age of 12, said this. Your mother sucks cocks in hell, oh, Your mother. <laughs> you know, I think I used to go out with her. I don't know. You surprised me. Now, time for the headlines. British farmers continue to sell British meat, claiming that it makes you look younger. <laughs> <laughs> and a boycott against the French seems likely. According to The Sun, it's the only language they understand. Well, except French. <laughs> of course, if the boycott happens, we might have to say au revoir to brie and camembert. But why is French soft cheese so delicious? Well, apparently, French farmers have a special way of pulling back the foreskin. <laughs> <laughs> a boycott must have public support. Here, one shrewd member of the public explains why it will never work. Oh, yeah, we'll have some of the French wine, that's all right, because we can't make French wine, can we? <laughs> Looking at him, maybe the French have got a point. I don't know. Hereditary peerages have been abolished, one lord denied the Prime Minister's claims that they are out of touch, and challenged Mr Chamberlain to tell him that to his face. <laughs> Although the Lords will be abolished, 12 will be allowed to remain until Christmas for the purpose of a leap in. <laughs> Avid news watchers in the South East have expressed concern over subliminal gay messages used in their local broadcasts. Michael Portillo ran the gauntlet of the group Outrage as he attempted to slip into the back entrance of Chelsea Town Hall before the selection. Aside from Labour and the Liberal Democrats, Mr Portillo now has to beat off a fellow former MP, a local councillor and a Basildon councillor when Conservatives choose their candidate next week. Sean Lay News from South East, Chelsea. That man has seen my report. He's copying me. He certainly is, Daisy. Elsewhere in politics, a recent poll shows that Tony Blair's popularity has slumped from 80% to 52%, with one-third of the electorate seeing him as arrogant. When asked for reaction, the Prime Minister said, shh, as if. 
<laughs> Lord Lucan has been declared officially dead and his estate valued at £14,000. Not bad for a sea reg Volvo. <laughs> and finally, international news. In Beijing, Chinese disco fans tried to break the record for the slowest ever synchronised YMCA routine. And those are today's headlines. Now, Daisy, with all this beef stuff going on, are you supporting the boycott? No, certainly not, Ian. He hits women, doesn't he? Um, <laughs> well, let's find out. Here's Alan Francis with this dispatch from the front line of the meat war. Not content with killing our princess, the French are at it again. After yesterday's action by French farmers at Calais, the unofficial trade war has been stepped up as Britain's National Farmers Union launched their campaign to buy British. In their report released today, they advocate clear branding for British products, while they advise non-British goods should be marked with this symbol. <laughs> the NFU initiative appeals to British shoppers who are being told that cutting out on continental cuisine doesn't mean missing out on the finer things in life. They suggest these British alternatives. Instead of French crepe, why not try Finder's crispy pancakes? <laughs> Instead of French champagne, go for the tangy fizz of Tenant Super. Instead of a French croissant and coffee in the morning, why not start the day with the all-day breakfast in a can? <laughs> Instead of French beef fed on human sewage, why not try English beef fed on the diseased brains of sheep? <laughs> but how are British shoppers responding to the NFU initiative? Would you consider boycotting French produce? Yes, I would. Or would you boycott French mustard? Oh, no, my boy likes that, so I'd buy that. <laughs> my are very nice, I'd buy them. French fries? French fries, too. No, no. French fries are not French. <laughs> Common sense skinhead William Haig wasted no time in berating the government's refusal to ban French meat products. I think they should ban products which may have been contaminated with sewage and other forms of, of waste. I don't think you need a lot of scientific advice to tell you that. I think that is just common sense. Mr Haig went on to point out that everything was Labour's fault and that 15 years of a Tory government force-feeding cows the diseased body parts of their own relatives was in no way wrong. So, while the two governments argue about the legal details, the message from the NFU is clear. If you must buy dubious meat, buy British. This is Alan Francis for the 11 o'clock show, Central London. Coming up in part two, our special guest, star of The Exorcist, is Linda Blair. The French and us British share an alphabet, but we, of course, use it better. In order to prove our linguistic superiority, we asked Ricky Gervais to come up with an A to Z of news. Today's letter, Ian, is G. Great Britain, Germans. Uh, global warming, that's when the weather's brilliant. Mild winters, excellent. <laughs> oh, the polar ice caps are melt. Whole countries will be flooded, not England. Mendioza and Laius is Bono, yeah. If the Africans paid us back what they owe us, I might take a look at it. Um, Guevara, Shay, one of the most important icons of the 20th century on every student wall. Uh, she's the bird scratching her ass playing tennis. Right? Uh, Greenwich Mean Time, that's the time that it actually is in the world. Uh, Gautieri, the bloke who tried to take the Falklands, my favourite war. I'll tell you why. It was a range war. See, our guns could fire 15 kilometres, theirs could fire about 10. So we just parked about 12 kilometres offshore, <laughs> theirs are going into the ocean, and we're shelling the shit out of them. It's the moral equivalent of holding a midget by the head at arm's length. He's flailing, and you're just kicking him in the bollocks. Um, Geneva, peace talks. Uh, Gervais, out. Welcome back to the 11 o'clock show. Now it's time for showbiz news. At last night's TV awards, Thora Heard, the tit interest in Last of the Summer Wine, <laughs> stunned viewers when she leapt her... <laughs> stunned viewers when she leapt to her feet and rushed to the stage to get her gong. <laughs> More on that story later. Michael Barrymore picked up the big award of the evening for special recognition. He was specially recognised being a lanky drunk bender. <laughs> I thought you were up for that, Ian. Yeah, I only had 52 of the categories, I'm afraid. Oh, yeah, you're not that tall. <laughs> now, 
ex Corey actor Stephen Billington is starring in a controversial new play which portrays Jesus as a gay man. The scene which gives it away is when he feeds 5,000 people with only two loaves, five fishes and a quiche. <laughs> Caprice has denied rumours that she's dating Rod Stewart. She said, I don't need another saggy blonde twat between my legs. <laughs> Time now to see how the old force's sweetheart, Thora Heard, is getting on. Oh, there she goes. There's never a stand and stare lift around when you need one. And that was today's showbiz news. The Exorcist is released on video this week. Here's the star of that movie. Please welcome Linda Blair. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you. Now, The Exorcist was made in 1973. It's called the horror movie of the century. Obviously, not now since the Blair Witch Project came out. <laughs> and Ghostbusters too, of course. Let's have, <laughs> let's have a look at a little clip if we can. By this sign of the Holy Cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Damien! Amen. Wow. <laughs> now, you were 12 when you made that. When did you first watch it? Um, I actually was, it was 13, 14, but it, it came out when I was 15. Right. So I, I saw young, it in the beginning. Still right too away. young to see it, though, legally. Well, in, in, at least in America, as long as you have your parent with you or right. whatever, you, you're allowed to see it. And, of course, I had made the film, so it was like a private screening. Yeah, yeah. Did, did you understand it at that age? It's quite in-depth, isn't it? I think that one of the, the, the things that people uh, don't understand is when you're young, you don't know... Uh, everything about religion. When we were making the film, it wasn't like I understood what the devil was or, or anything. And so watching the film, it was just a different experience for me. I mean, the special effects were incredible, mm. and, and being part of it was, was quite an experience. But I think, most importantly, people thought that there was something wrong with me. Now, of course, you know, I'm not saying that there is not, but... <laughs> so did, did people actually think that you were possessed by the devil in real life? And would you get priests coming around trying to heal you? No, 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 but you could see it in people's eyes. Yeah. You could see it in people's eyes. And, of course, here, even in, in London, that was quite a free-for-all. I was it, was... it was something else. There was journalists from around the world congregated here, and the headlines, of course, were that I was in a mental institute and that uh, all this... Yeah, so it's kind of why I didn't come back for a long time. You guys weren't very nice to me. Yep. <laughs> now, piss off! <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> okay. And now the film's released on video and DVD this week. Yes, you, Do you all think have it's been missed scariest... out for 15 years. Yeah. We Do you might think have it's the scariest Blair Witch, though? Have you seen Blair They're Witch? They're two different films, and many people have asked oh, me about that okay. this week. Um, of course, they took my name, you know, and called me a witch. It was mm. not very nice. Um, it did very well in America. They're two different types of films, um, and you'll see for yourselves. I'm not. Were you scared it. by Blair Witch Project? No. Neither was I. Now, what have you been doing since The Exorcist? I want you to name some of your films. Oh, uh, let's see. Roller Boogie. Hell Night, which was just re-released, which was, is doing well in America. Um, Sweet Hostage with Martin Sheen. Born Innocent, Sarah T. Um, Don't forget, of course, sure. Chained Heat, Bedroom Eyes 2 and Up Your Alley. Up, up your alley? What was Up, up Your, your alley, alley about? Um, is that about Kirsty Alley or anything? <laughs> <laughs> Fertility treatment. Yes, yes, it, it was. Oh, really? <laughs> it hasn't all been scary stuff because you started your career as a child model. Wasn't one of your first jobs modelling as uh, modelling for a Heidi doll? Um, well, um, I, I see we have a, a doll out well, here. Well, um, you've actually got one. Actually, uh, no, that's not Heidi. Heidi was a little doll, and you pushed her belly button, and her hand went up and said, "Hi, Heidi." Could, does that work <laughs> on, on you? No, okay. <laughs> right, okay. Now, Why don't that, you give it a go? Yeah. <laughs> See what happens. I will do them a dressing later. Now, <laughs> we, we, have, we have managed to get one of your dolls here. I took it home last night and played with it, and it started to do this. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> big, big, big. That's very good. Actually, not as, that not was as good, good as we thought it would be. <laughs> Linda Blair, thanks very much. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? The World Health Organization. Who? Precisely. 
<laughs> yeah, the World Health Organization is in the news this week because it's worried about our mental health. Apparently, Britain spends so little on tackling depression, we're all in danger of becoming a nation of miserable bleeders. Depression is everywhere. Even funny man Mike Yarwood is suffering from clinical depression. Apparently, he keeps hearing voices in his head, but they're all slightly unconvincing and date back to the mid-70s. <laughs> so, to jump on the depression bandwagon, here's the 11 o'clock show's Blues and Don'ts. If you're feeling blue, do whistle a happy tune. Don't whistle the complete works of Radiohead. <laughs> do try to rise early and remain socially active. Don't spend a week in bed crying and masturbating. <laughs> um, unless you're wonky gobbed artist Tracy Emin. Do speak to others about your depression. Don't go on and on and on about it, for Christ's sake. Do take Prozac. Don't wash it down with a cup of bleach. <laughs> do lift up your head and smile. Don't bother. What's the point? You'll die one day, possibly alone and definitely in pain. <laughs> A new survey has discovered that women get paid less than men for doing exactly the same job. And that's why Daisy gets the bus home and I take a stretch limo packed with booze and easy women. <laughs> <laughs> to explore the gender gap, I made this special report for less than Ian would have. <laughs> a report out today reveals that women earn 20% less than their male counterparts, the men. As a woman who's 20% short in money, not height, I came to London to find out why. Lily Savage. Yeah, I know Lily. Don't you think she'd get paid more if she was a man? Well, she's a man. Do you think um, it's right that women get paid less? No, no, not if they're doing the same job. But they are always on the period. <laughs> what do you mean, always on the period? On the rag. <laughs> on the blob. Oh, I'm not with Got the painters in? <laughs> oh, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Yes, yes. What jobs do you think women should be paid more for, apart from the obvious care work, office work, sports, modelling, policing and armed forces? More money? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, can't think they should, I can't think of any, to be truthful. Exactly. Do you think that women are professional at work? Oh, yes, they are. They, Sorry, they can are. you hold on one second? <laughs> How was it? Excuse me, I'm sorry, I just have sorry, to go now. Sorry, hold two seconds. <laughs> if you were me, and I was you, yeah. and you were interviewing me for this, should you be paid the same as me? Try it. No, I... Hold that. And you can ask me a question. Why are, you doing, why are you doing this survey? I'm not going to answer that because you're media filth. <laughs> Brilliant. Filthiest mouth in television. Now it's time for more news, Justin. Over £200,000 in coins have gone missing from the Royal Mint. Police said the thieves could be yards away by now. A ban on women joining the Royal Marines was upheld by the Euro Parliament this week. However, a spokesman for the army say they now regret the decision as the washing up in the barracks is getting a bit out of hand. <laughs> the Pope has been telling elderly people that they should live life to the full. That from a 79-year-old virgin who still has to work and spends a lot of time in church. <laughs> Having delivered the message, His Holiness immediately killed over with the weight of one of his own piles. <laughs> Posh Spice has been talking about married life with hubby David Beckham. She describes their home's nine bedrooms, or as Victoria puts it, one for every day of the week. <laughs> and that was more news, just in. Over the last few months, I've been taking a long, hard look at my life, and I've decided there's a political hole in it. So do you know what I've, do you know what I've decided to do? No, Ian, I've absolutely no idea. Have a look at this. Since the age of six, I've only been a member of two clubs, the Airfix Modelers Club and S Club 7. But recently I've decided this isn't enough, so over the next few weeks I intend to invite the three main political parties to cajole me, charm me, bribe me and even beat me into joining them. The first stop of my political odyssey has brought me to Harrogate, miles away, to find out the truth behind the mysterious Lib Dems. 
So we've all registered at the conference, everyone's got their ID cards and they're all done perfectly, except for one mistake on mine, they've called me Lane Lee. What's the best reason for voting Lib Dem? Um, the other two parties don't seem to have any real ideas. In one word, why should people vote for the Liberal Democrats? The only party... In one, in one word. <laughs> I'll do that, I'll in one word. Um, Paddy Ashdown fought long and hard and just managed to drag your party to third place in the general elections. <laughs> Will Charles Kennedy be as effective, do you think? <laughs> Paddy Ashdown took us, uh, made us, uh, took, uh, made, 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 calm down. If I joined the Liberal Democrats today, what would I get today? Well, you'd become part of an organisation trying desperately to sort out a lot of very difficult problems in the country. You get the opportunity to be part of that. They've, they've spelt my name wrong. Well, I've met the crazy old guard, but the future of any party lies in its youth. I thought I'd try and catch a glimpse of that future at the Lib Dem Youth and Student Disco at Jimmy's Nightclub. All right, then. Thank you. All right, it's now just after 8 o'clock. That was Polly from the Liberal Democrat Youth and Student Group. And apparently, I'm no longer invited to their rubbish disco at Jimmy's. But hopefully, this won't influence my decision on which party I go for. Although, they did spell my fucking name wrong, didn't they? <laughs> a lot of people say, Liberal Democrats, you are really, really boring. You're the most boring, rubbish party in the whole country. You're so rubbish and shit, you couldn't even run a country. You haven't got a clue what you're doing. You're rubbish. How would you react to people like that? <laughs> well, uh, to the charge that we're boring, you should have seen us party last night. <laughs> where, was, where was this party? At uh, Jimmy's Nightclub. Oh, yeah, what, what happened at Jimmy's Nightclub? We were going to go to that. Yeah. You could have, if you'd got a ticket. Yeah, we, we, we got tickets. Ah, why didn't you go then? They wouldn't let us go. Next time you see them, would you just tell them I'm not very happy? Just let them know. I might do, if okay. I know your name. Can I see your name? Yep. Then, well, this is another, this is another return I'd like to raise to you, Alex, actually. I'm glad you brought that up. So this has been the first leg of my political rebirth, the Lib Dem Conference 99. What have I learned? Well, the party members seem very proud on their open attitude towards discussing party policies. But is this a case of too many cooks, I ask myself? Also, if the youth really are the future of British politics, I think it's about time they learn some manners. And finally, and most importantly, when are the Lib Dems going to learn to spell my fucking name right? This has been Lane Lee for the 11 o'clock show, Harrogate. Not, not too impressed by the Lib Dems. No, not that impressed by for an update on today's main story, go over now to Alan Francis in Dover. Alan, what's the mood like there? Well, Ian, with the prospect of a trade war, people are hoarding foreign goods. The English are heading for Calais to stock up on wine and cheese, and the French are heading here to Dover to make sure they don't run out of Marmite and Scotch eggs. <laughs> and does the French government look like withdrawing the British beef ban? Well, Ian, not for the moment, but if my memory serves me correctly, they didn't object to some British beef crossing the Channel in 1944. <laughs> Thanks to Alan Francis in Dover. Thank you, Ian. Tomorrow night, our special guest will be Michael Winner. And we'll be hearing from this man. Did you ever work for President Reagan? Yes, I was his Secretary of State. I know him very well. Is it true, looking back now, that Reagan and Thatcher was actually doing it? <laughs> Is that really true? Doing it? For real? Just before we go, proof that Hillary Clinton's going out of her way to keep her man. <laughs> Good, Good night. night. And tomorrow, our alternative news chums will be here at five past eleven.